right, again, the next topic in our video series and course is going to be the importance of data. Nowadays, your data is considered an asset. So your cell phone, for instance, right? Your cell phone isn't just something that you call people on, that you text people on. Your cell phone is pretty much like your digital wallet, your digital portfolio, your digital lifeline, right? Most people can't really operate without their cell phone because they have personal information on there. They got passwords. They got GPS. That's another thing. You know, most people, if you don't have a GPS, you can't get to where you're going. So that's why data has become an asset. And data is simply defined as factual information such as measurements or statistics used as a basis for reasoning, discussion, or calculation. So a lot of companies, right, love your data. Facebook loves your data. Google loves your data. Uh, Instagram loves your data. The FBI loves your data. All right, so if you think that um, you're surfing the web or you're doing things and nobody's watching you, eh, good luck with that, all right? Now, so a lot of people that are watching you, um, it may not be for nefarious or malicious reasons, but there is somebody watching you. And the reason that organizations want to watch you is because of advertising, right? So with your data, somebody can get your entire life, pinpoint your location, uh, where you work, your likes, and your dislikes. So with data now being looked at as an asset, it's super important that in a perfect world that your data is always private and always secure. Now, it's getting more and more important to have secure data and your privacy as well. Now, that's going to be up to you. We can talk um, about data, privacy, and security a little bit later on, but right now, we want to just talk about data being an asset. We're going to go ahead and go to the next slide because you should understand that data is your lifeblood. Um, with the right amount of data, somebody can literally steal your identity and become who you are. All right, so let's talk about intellectual property. So these courses that are over at itmasterkey.com, um, my YouTube channel, all of the things that I create digitally are digital products, right? Meaning that there's not something physical that you can touch, but it's something that you can digitally engage with. So intellectual property is super important. So that little guy on the bottom left that's smiling, that's me, should be pretty close, I think. Um, that would be intellectual property. This entire lecture would be my intellectual property, all right? So the actual definition of intellectual property is creations of the mind, such as inventions, literary and artistic works, designs, symbols, names, and images used in commerce, um, also known as business. So let's talk about the differences between trademarks, copyrights, and patents. So you see my logo and then you see some other super recognizable logos, right? So you got McDonald's, um, Nike, you got Starbucks. So if any of you guys have seen uh, Coming to America, right? Um, there's a restaurant in Coming to America called McDowell's, right? In real life, McDowell's would have probably had a problem. They would have had a problem. They didn't have a problem in the movie because um, it was called McDowell's. They had some different, whatever McDonald's did, they kind of did the opposite, but it was pretty much the same damn restaurant. So trademarks allows you to separate yourself from other people and not allow people to use your logo or your phrase um, without some kind of compensation, right? So McDonald's, everybody, no matter where you are in the world, that logo right there is McDonald's. No matter where you are in the world, everybody knows the uh, Nike symbol. If you want some coffee, uh, drop in the comments what the hell that lady's supposed to represent. I don't know what the, who that lady is or if that's like the if the lady is a uh, if a, the founder is a lady or what I don't know what that logo represents but if you want coffee you know that Starbucks uh, the green uh, logo with the lady in the front is for Starbucks so those are trademarks right now copyrights um, whenever you watch a movie whenever you go to a movie it's usually a big warning to say hey FBI warning you know this movie this material is copywritten right so if something is copywritten it means that 
you cannot copy you can't license you can't use that information without explicit consent from whoever the creator is okay so trademarks is usually logos and phrases and stuff like that copyrights is hey i'm gonna actually ask you can i have the copyrights to this so i can use it in a movie or use it in a music video so let's just say that um in this video i want to play um some uh i want to play some um the baby or something in this actual lecture right as soon as i upload this lecture to um the internet i'm going to get hit with a copyright meaning that hey you didn't ask this artist if you could use that music or if i want to use some clips from um a, a, a movie i'll get hit with copyright as well patents so patents um if you watch shark tank right uh, most of the time they'll ask hey do you have a patent on this and they'll say patent pending or something like that so a patent just means that i have an idea this is what i want to create or i've actually created something and i want to put a patent on it and pretty much lock down this design so nobody else can make and create this design make sense good all right so we kind of um, touched on this a little bit before when we were talking about data being an asset so data um, this is kind of a big thing with Facebook because like I said Facebook collects a, a bunch of your data and then sells it to advertisers like hey this guy is in um, a group about sneakers he um, is always liking pictures about sneakers so let me sell this data to face uh, to Foot Locker and to East Bay and to um, Foot Action and to Nike's and start advertising and marketing to this guy because this is what he likes or uh, this girl is liking pictures of Greece and then she likes a picture of France and then she likes a picture of Chicago and she likes a picture of Alaska all right so maybe she wants to travel or likes to travel so let's start sending her airfare and hotels.com and stuff like that right so it's like this says um, if you ever feel like somebody's watching you on the internet somebody's collecting that information uh, for example every time you type something into Google that is being collected and then it's being sold to uh, businesses to um, retarget advertising to you um, that's just you know not nothing scary but that's just what it is so if you've ever noticed that hey you start looking up old muscle cars and then next time you go on Google on the side it's a bunch of frames for 1970 Chevelles or it's, um, uh tires for 80 uh, 80s uh, trans am or something like that right so they use all that to collect and pretty much build a profile on you to figure out okay how can we um advertise to this person because you have to understand uh, those big companies like facebook uh, instagram uh, TikTok, uh, and a lot of those different types of social media platforms are highly dependent on advertising dollars that's pretty much how they make their money so uh, they can use your browsing habits to advertise products that you may be likely to buy improve your browsing experience um, they say they improve it by pretty much showing you stuff that you're more likely to like so if they notice like I said that you like cars and your Facebook feed your Instagram feed you'll start seeing more muscle cars you'll start seeing more um, mechanic hobby stuff stuff like that okay um, and last but not least they can create a database of customers that are like you to start advertising to them as well okay this guy is uh, 30 years old he's from Detroit he likes this he likes that he works here okay I wonder if there's more people like him or if it, uh, you know most people that are from Detroit if they do like this and I kind of try and make a uh, demographic so gang I already know that you learned more than you knew uh, about data um, before you clicked on this video if you're watching this video on youtube make sure that you comment like and subscribe because uh, in the actual course we're about to go into a story time kind of and just kind of drill all this stuff home if you want to enroll inside of the full course you can head over to itmagicky.com not only will you get lectures but you'll get uh, scenario questions you'll get practice exams you'll get simulations you'll get a more immersive experience over there if you're already in the course go ahead and go to the next lecture and you'll see what I'm talking about other than that I'll see you in class